Hello everyone, my name is Landro Assistant, assisting you with another math video. In today's fast-moving world, finding a mathematical solution for transporting merchandise from one place to another and for allocating resources from several production facilities to the customer's location that minimize time and cost is an important field of mathematical application. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about how to solve transportation problems. But before that, a little background about transportation theory. In mathematics and economics, transportation theory or transport theory is a name given to the study of optimal transportation and allocation of resources. The problem was formalized by the French mathematician Gaspard Monge in 1781. Major advances were made in the field during World War II by Soviet mathematician and economist Leonid Kontorovich. Consequently, the problem, as it is stated now, is sometimes known as the monge kantorovich transportation problem. The linear programming formulation of the transportation problem is also known as the hitchcock koopmans transportation problem. So here is now our problem for today. Let's say a company manufactures a type of product in three different production plants. And let's call those production plants as P1, P2, and P3. The company supplies three customers, C1, C2, and C3, who require 65, 42, and 43 units per month, respectively. The unit transportation costs from each production plant to each customer are displayed in the table. For example here, the transportation cost for transporting the product from production plant number one to customer number one is $5, the cost of transporting goods from production facility number two to customer number one is $4, and so on and so forth. Our goal in this problem is to optimize the transportation cost. Now about transportation problem, there could be two types of transportation problems. One is called balanced transportation problem, and the second one is called as unbalanced transportation problems. For the balanced transportation problems, if you add all the supplies and all the demands, there should be equal amount or balance number. And as the name suggests, when the supply and the demand total are not equal, then we have an unbalanced transportation problem. Now, in solving transportation problems, we are going to follow these steps. The first step is we are going to find a basic feasible solution using any of these three methods. Either we use the least cost method, or the northwest corner rule method, or the Vogel's approximation method, also known as penalty method. The goal of step number one is just to allocate the goods to each of the customers so that later on in step number two, we are going to perform what we call as the optimality test in order to assess if our feasible solution is the one that will give us the least cost. Let me explain this using an example. In this problem, we are going to use the least cost method in order to allocate the supply to the demand. In the least cost method, the first thing that we're going to do is inspect the unit cost of moving goods from one facility to one destination. For example here, among the costs, this number four and this other number four are the two lowest costs. Since there are two of them, we can just randomly select any of these two values. Let's say we are going to select this first value. So we are in row number two, column number one. We want to allocate first to the cell because the cost of transporting goods here is the lowest. So we want to maximize the amount of goods that we can allocate to destination C1. If you go down below, we have a total demand of 65. And if you go to the right, we have a total supply of 50 units. So what we can do is select whichever is the smallest value. In this case, 30 is smaller than 65. So we can allocate all these 30 items to this cell. That means that we already used up all the available supply from plant number two. And so, we can no longer allocate for this cell, and we can no longer allocate for this cell. 
But since there's a demand of 65 and we just fulfilled 30, we still have to fulfill 35 more items for customer number one. For the next step, again, we are going to inspect the cost and look for the cell with the least amount of cost. In this case, five is the lowest among five, seven, eight, six, seven, and seven. So again, we look at this 35 and we look at the 70. Which one is the lowest? The lowest is 35. So we can now allocate the entire 35 here. And therefore, customer one's demand is already met. We do not need this part anymore. But since we already used up 35 here, there's still a balance here of 35. Because 70 minus 35 is 35. Then among the available cells, let's look at again the costs. The transportation cost here is 7, 7, 7, and 8. There are three sevens. We just pick any one of them. Let's say, let's pick this seven. And then you look at this 42 and you look at that 35. The lowest is 35. So we can allocate the entire 35 here. And therefore, there's nothing more to allocate for the goods from production number one, because we already have 35 and 35 to get 70. And since there's a demand here of 42 and we only fulfilled 35 of these orders, then there's still a remaining seven unfulfilled items. And for the remaining two cells, both of them are seven. So we can now allocate this seven here. And by allocating seven, we subtract seven from 50 to get 43. And this 43 is now allocated to this last vacant cell. So that means our basic feasible solution as of this first step is from production one, allocate 35 of the 70 to customer number one and allocate the remaining 35 to customer number two. From plant number two, we supply the entire 30 items to customer number one. And for plant number three, we allocate seven items to customer number two and the remaining 43 to customer number three. In this case, all the demands were fulfilled and all the supplies are allocated. So here is now the summary of what we just did. And we now call this as our basic feasible solution. And those occupied cells we call as our basic variables. And the unoccupied cells we call as the non-basic variables. Now we want to know how much is the cost now of this assignment. So for the total cost, we have 35 items here times 5, and we have 30 items here times 4, and we have 35 times 7, and we have 7 times 7, and we have 43 times 7, and this gives us a total of $890 for the transportation cost. Now we do not know if this is the optimal solution. In other words, we do not know if we can still find a lower cost by rearranging this initial allocation. So we now move to the next step, which is the optimality test. For the optimality test, we call our rows are the use variable, and we call the columns as our v's variables. We start by assigning zero for u sub one. And then for this five, we look at this five as the sum of this u sub one and v sub one. And so we now form this equation, u sub one plus v sub one is equal to five, which is this five. And knowing that u sub one is zero, that means that v sub one must be five. So we assign a value here of five. We are going to use these values when we compute for the optimality test. Then to find u sub two, we know that v sub one is five and u sub two plus five is equal to four. That means the value of u sub two must be negative one because u sub two plus five is equal to four, which implies that u sub two is negative one. Then for the next cell, we have u sub one plus v sub two is equal to seven. And since u sub one is zero, that implies that v sub two is equal to seven. So v sub two is equal to seven. 
By the way, u sub 2 here is negative 1. This is negative 1. Then let's compute for the remaining. You have u sub 3 and u sub 2. So this intersection here is equal to 7. And so u sub 3 plus the value of v sub 2, which is 7, that gives us a value of 0 for u sub 3. And lastly, for this occupied cell, we have u sub 3 plus v sub 3 equals d7. And so, knowing that u sub 3 is 0, that means v sub 3 is equal to 7. So by using our occupied cells, we were able to assign these values for the rows and the columns, and we call them as our u's and v's that we are using in our transportation algorithm. Let's write this cleanly now in the next page. So we have these column values for v's and we have these row values for u. For the optimality test, for the non-basic variables, meaning the unoccupied cells, this is unoccupied, another unoccupied, and all of these mark cells are unoccupied. We are going to compute the weights for the cell. And the notation we use is wij, where i and j are our indices to identify the location in terms of row and column. For example, this vacant cell here is at the first row, third column. So we will call this cell as w, first row, third column. And we are going to compute the weight using this formula, u sub i plus v sub j minus c sub i j. And if the results that we get here for each of these non-basic variables are all less than or equal to zero, that means the table is in the optimal solution. If there are positive values that we arrive at, we're going to use loop pivoting in order to tweak and improve our allocation. So let's compute first the weights. So for this empty cell that is at row number one, column number three, we are going to use u sub 1 and add that to v sub 3. So you have 0 plus 7, which are these values, 0 and 7, and subtract the cost in that empty cell. The cost is $8. And this gives us a cost weight of negative 1. And we are going to do that for the remaining three other vacant cells. So for the second row, second column, we got positive 1. For second row, third column, we got zero. And for third row, first column, we got a cost weight of negative eight. Notice that all these three are optimal except this positive one. And that positive one happens at this cell. In order for us to see where are the locations of all these weights, let's put those values in the cells. So this is negative, this is positive, this is negative, this is zero. So we are only concerned about this positive because all the rest are already in their optimal state. Once we identified which one is the positive value, if there are several positive values, you start with the highest value. In our case, there's only one positive, so we are only concerned with the cell. Now, in this case, we are going to form this loop. Either the loop goes counterclockwise or clockwise direction. But the way to identify the direction of the loop is from the empty cell, you look at the two adjacent cells and you count it like this, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. For all the odd cells, we are going to subtract and for all the even cells, we are going to add. So this is zero, one, two, three. That means we are going to subtract here we are going to subtract here, but we are going to add in this even number of cells. You look at 30 and 35, the lower value is 30. You pick that lower value 30, and you add that to this empty cell. So subtract 30 here, but add the 30 here. So you now have 30 added in the cell. But in order to maintain the balance, since we are adding more supply to this customer number two, we need to subtract 30 from this 35 so that customer number two still get what it orders. We do not want to oversupply customer number two. So we're going to subtract 30 here. And by subtracting 30 here, you are 
removing some of the items for plant number one. So you are going to transfer that by adding whatever is subtracted here. So plus 30. And since this one was already transferred to the other side, this must be empty. So this is now how this would look like. We transfer the 30 from here going here. We subtract 30 here. And therefore we have 5. And then the 30 that we subtracted in this cell, we added to the left to get 65 here. And we now have a new allocation. We just reallocated the item from here going to this part, which was initially vacant. And we perform this pivot and we complete the loop. That's why we call this as the loop pivoting. Now, after performing this loop pivoting, we would like to update our weight. So we want to find the weight of row number two and column number one. And the weight now is computed as negative one plus five minus the cost here of four. And negative one plus five minus four is equal to zero. That means we now arrive at an optimal solution because all our weights are negative one, zero, zero, and negative eight, all of them pass the optimality test that says the weights as computed here must be less than or equal to zero. So in this new allocation, let's compute how much is the transportation cost. So here is now the total cost. We have 65 times five, and we have five times seven, and we have 30 times four, and we have seven times seven, and we have 43 times seven. And this gives us a total of $830. Notice that initially our total cost was $890. By performing this loop pivoting method and making sure that the result passes the optimality test, we arrive at a minimum transportation cost of $830. So this is one method of solving transportation problems. In the world of Amazon and other delivery companies, the problem is more complex, but with the use of fast computers and using these algorithms, these companies are able to maximize their resources, minimize the time and the cost of transporting goods from production facilities to household customers. And much of the development of these algorithms happened during World War II when the demand for transporting soldiers and resources and foods and other supplies challenged different governments to do it fast using the least amount of resources and time in order to win World War II. So thank you, thank you very much. And if you find this video worthwhile, please share them with your friends, your relatives, your classmates, and your students. And don't forget also to watch our videos because by doing so, you are helping our academy produce videos like this, sponsor our virtual math contest, sponsor our math problems of the week, and all the other programs that we are providing in this community of math learners. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.